Hey, Joey. <laughs> Are you here to tell them what, what they'd like to know about sheep? This video is all about how we started our farm and what we wish or what we think would have been helpful for us when we were starting that we simply didn't understand or know. If there's something that we missed that you all would like to know, put it in the comments below. If it's something that needs a video, we will make a video for it. If it's something we can simply answer, we'll answer. We answer every comment on all the videos on our channel. Welcome everyone, my name is Travis, and this is the farm that my wife and I have built over the last four years. I don't know how well you can see through these guys. This video is hopefully to help others that want to get started in sheep, but would like some answers to the questions that we kind of never got answers to until we experimented and figured it out, which isn't a bad thing per se. But it's kind of a bad thing because when you go in blind like that, especially when you're buying animals, you are taking a large risk. And even if it's only, say, $500 in animals, it's still $500 that you spent on the animals that you don't want to lose. So let us dive in a little deeper to kind of hopefully <laughs> shine some light on the things that hopefully will be helpful in your case. So this is kind of where it all started. We had one seven acre pasture and we bought three sheep originally and we're kind of just playing with the idea of seeing if it would work how well it would work etc we also didn't have an answer of how many sheep can we run per acre the answers vary drastically by the condition of the pasture the soil that you're in the climate you're in all kinds of things play into it so if you don't have somebody near you to ask that has similar ground as you do you're just going to have to kind of make an educated guess. It's really as, as good as it's going to get. But we did soil tests too to see the soil conditions. Yes. Soil tests were very helpful for getting pasture back to good health. But as far as getting everything set up... Yeah, they're loud. Holy smokes! It's like they're beating somebody's head off of it. It's just several of them. I don't know feeding. if you can hear it in the video, but when we go in there, you're going to see the creep feeder, and they're in there kicking it because there's not a lot of grain in it, and we've got the we've got to turn down and we're going to put a lot out for them. Anyway, all those things are going to come into to play, and you're going to have to give you a number. So we ended up going with seven. Seven was going to be our number because by the research that we found online and then other people around that, I mean, we're the not the only ones in Texas County, Missouri, but there's not very many. So the individual that we ended up buying 40 more from, we talked to him, and they lived up in North Missouri, so they have a lot better soil, better for even growing row crops, and uh, so therefore their pasture is going to be better. Came up with the number of seven, so we're like, hey, we'll, we'll stick to no more than seven per acre, because at the time, again, we only had a seven acre pasture. So that means we could run up to 50 in that seven acres. Well, that's where things get a little more tricky. Parasites. We didn't have... We had no idea what a parasite was. Well, I mean, we knew what a parasite was. Well, we knew was. what they were. We knew we didn't that know. you had to treat them with a yeah. dewormer. We didn't know how bad they were. For sheep. Yeah, for sheep. <laughs> was, and we'd have some that got sick, and like lethargic, and then they'd start losing a bunch of weight. And we're sitting here thinking that, well, they must not be eating enough. We need to put more hay out or something. Or we're doing something wrong in that aspect. We did eventually figure out the parasite issues and kind of got more associated with it. But we also realized that it's not possible to raise sheep, so if you have seven acres or whatever, it's not possible to raise 50 of them, for instance, in seven acres because you're gonna have to you're gonna have to split it up to where it's several paddocks. So, like, if you had seven one-acre paddocks, it would work okay, but it wouldn't be as ideal as say 14 one-acre paddocks. The idea is to break up the rotation so that when they so, for instance, now that we have a rotational grazing setup, we have 10 five acre paddocks plus a two two acre lambing paddocks and one uh, livestock or uh, not livestock, barnyard that's one acre so essentially when they leave paddock one they will not return to paddock one for 60 days because we leave them on each pasture for five days and we built these pastures big enough that even when we grow to 350 head we will still have the ability to keep 
350 of them on a five acre paddock for five days. Now, why five days, you ask? Well, that's very simple. Parasites, so as soon as a sheep's walking in to that pasture, they're already pooping. As soon as they poop, there's larvae eggs that are in that manure that are gonna hatch six days later. Hence, why you rotate it five days. This was a night and day difference in our, in our whole program. When we made it to where they were not in the same paddock for six or for two months, basically, it was a complete game changer. We actually had so much dewormer on hand because of the headaches that we had with having them all on seven acres and even trying to rotate them individually, you know, from uh, Chrissy would move this plastic fence deal that we made to Which be able is to. a headache. Yeah, uh, I don't recommend going that route, but if that's what you got to do, that's what you got to do. Anyways, moving, moving that uh, every couple days, we finally got some research in and realized that, hey, they could stay there for five days as long as there's enough grass and they're not eaten down too far. About three inches. Yeah, so no that further. bottom four inches of grass is what's going to have your parasites on it. So, you're welcome. Because I wish we would have but understood that. But if you do that, have right? to use the dewormer, you don't want to use the same dewormer all the time because they'll build up a resistance to it. Yes. You have to rotate your dewormers. So that's the other key. That's why we had you know four or five different variations of dewormers on hand, and a lot of money in dewormers. We had probably four or five hundred dollars in dewormers on hand for forty-five sheep. So the numbers just didn't really make much sense at that point. Got to the point though where we, we had the pasture situation under control. The fencing, this is the other thing. So, we talk. so when we first got our sheep, you can see that this was actually the original border fence for our property right here. So, the yeah, the woven wire wasn't on there, we added that. This woven wire we put right over barbed wire and it worked out fine, it wasn't a big deal. Had we had it all to do over again, we would have taken the barbed wire down, but this is where we're at. Yeah. So woven wire is definitely the way to go. Even if you put five or six strands of barbed wire up, it may keep your sheep in, but what it won't do is keep your predators out. So stray dogs, which actually happen to be a bigger problem for us than any coyotes in the area. They like to dump their dogs. Yeah. That was a, a very big problem. So again, the woven wire did fix that and pretty much stopped it. The other kind of crazy aspect to the whole thing was if you put uh, electric fence up it worked great except when you get any grass or something like that that grows up and then it starts touching it because it grounds it out so now if something else touches that electric wire somewhere else along that run it doesn't shock them or it'll barely shock them because it's already grounding out in another spot Again, life lessons there. So we're going to disregard this barn over here for now, right? So just the one that we're in at the moment. This used to have horse stalls right here. And those horse stalls were used as lambing pens originally. So like when we'd have one born, we'd bring mom and babies in here. Let them stand here for a couple days to get acquainted with each other. Because we were under the influence that they had to do that. Like that they wouldn't make it if they didn't. Turns out they don't need that, just so you know. Unless the mom and baby are really having problems. So then we took the horse stalls down so we could park. Uh, at the time we had a smaller tractor. We parked it in here and parked, I think the brush hog, a little stuff in here. We had two little pins over here. And we also had our gravity wagon that we used to store our grain in right there. Well, they worked out pretty well, except the fact that we uh, messed up and let everybody in here overnights. So when it was cold out, they would not be in the pasture anymore. They'd come in here and they always packed around everything. So there'd be manure everywhere and it would be a mess. Yeah, if you're gonna bring them in, it has to be like child-proofed because the lambs yeah, will get will stuck They will find every little thing anything. to get their head stuck in or their body stuck yeah. in and then they'll thrash around and they'll hurt themselves because they can't figure out that they can just back up. Or they'll get to the point where they're so tired that they're just too weak to get out. And remember, these lambs, for the most part, they need to eat every couple hours. And they lose body heat relatively quickly if they don't. So more, more fun facts for you. But this was the original setup. And it's changed drastically into this. Since PJ's here, it's probably a good time to bring it up. 
I know a lot of people don't like bottle babies. I'm well aware of that. And yes, it does cost more to raise a bottle baby than it does to have the mom raise it. It's absolutely true. And ultimately, mom is always going to raise her baby better than you will ever be able to. But this is the convenience. She is easy to work with, right? The other thing is, is that if I get PJ to follow me, I got everybody to follow me. And then that makes it to where when we're outside and they're out in the pastures, if I need to do something, hey, I'm trying to record a video and you're not being helpful. You're not being helpful. And you ripped your tag out, dude. Come on. That makes my life much simpler. So Joy, as you've seen, Joy. This is Joy. This is the bottle baby from this year. Some years we have, you know, three or four or five bottle babies, and other years we have one, which, again, it's okay. But we do like to have at least one every year, just because you keep that going in every generation. It makes our life a little easier, especially, like I said, when we're working them. So there's three very important things that go on inside this barn. And ironically enough, they're not all those, peop all those sheep behind me making noise. That's number one. This is number two, and this is number three. Why are those things so important? Well, it's actually very simple. Nutrients. The way that they get their nutrients in the winter, obviously, is through hay, grain, and this mineral that you saw behind me. Now, you've seen that there's no food troughs, no feed troughs in here for the adult ewes or rams. That creep feeder up there is only for the lambs, and that's actually set up. You can see how we made it on our channel. Uh, you go back a few videos. That is designed for them to eat only. This hay, while we make it ourselves, like we talked about earlier as far as you know, saving yourself some money, especially if you're gonna become a larger operation. Well, this is not enough to maintain a ewe, let alone a ewe that's pregnant, or a ewe that is lactating and feeding her babies. That's where the grain comes in, and the minerals. Now, the minerals, we offer them year-round for, well, mainly for one big reason. They're needed. Selenium is the most important nutrient that you can give sheep. Selenium is what allows them to fire their muscles and move. So without it, they become paralyzed, and even though it looks like they're in good health, other than the fact that they're laying and they won't get up, and say that they've been laying there so long that the manure is starting to pile up behind them, it is not how they should live, obviously. They need that selenium so they can move. If you were to say, oh, let's say that you didn't offer free range minerals, and you have it added into their feed that they get. So in our case, they get fed outside. That's also in our uh, in previous videos on how we do that. But that's where they get their grain. They get one pound of grain per head per day. And it does have prebiotics, probiotics, lots of minerals and stuff in it. So they actually eat a lot less of the minerals in here. Now, when they're on pasture and they're eating fresh grass, they do eat the minerals. But for instance, a 50 pound bag of salt and then mixed. We talk about how we mix our minerals as well. That's on a different video too. If you look at that, right? So it's 53 pounds of grain, or sorry, 53 pounds of mineral that goes out to them in a large uh, mineral trough that we have made where it's portable. That will last them on pasture about two weeks. In here, three pounds, which would, well, yeah, three pounds of salt and then the one ounce of uh, one mineral mix and then there's two ounces of another mineral mix so just, it's, it's three pounds and, and three ounces of minerals basically this will only last them about three days that means that they're eating one pound per day so again while that 50 pounds that we're feeding them out in the pasture isn't a lot and it lasts a long time that would mean that they're eating almost three times as much of it when they're on pasture. Even though green grass that's growing gives them a lot of nutrients, gives them a lot of, of nutritional value that just can't be offered in hay no matter how good you make it. That's the difference it makes. Hi PJ, I don't have any grain, I'm sorry. 
that's why I'm saying that the minerals are incredibly important. And we offer them free range minerals because if you buy the mineral tubs, which we've done before, you're wasting your money. All that molasses in there does is make them want to eat it. You could put a 250 pound, I think it was 250 pound tub, right? We put a 250 pound tub out there that's a sheep and mineral, sheep mineral with molasses in it, obviously, because that's how they make it stay solid in there. And when we only had, I think, 60 or so at the time, they would eat it gone in a day, maybe two, two days tops, but it was gone. Like, I mean, you could, you could take that tub and rinse it out. I mean, there's nothing in there. You could use it for something else at that point. That's where I'm saying that you're wasting your money on those. Not saying that they don't have nutritional value, but I'm saying that the additives that they have in there make them to where they want to eat it and they want to eat more of it, even though that only, their body can only absorb so much of it. That's why free range minerals are the right answer. The last bit we're going to talk about, hey, this is going to change kind of how your operation works or how your life is. If you can make it to where they're wasting less hay, not only are you going to come out here and have to feed less, but you're also going to save money. And like we talked about before, hay's not cheap and it's only going to go up. Saving money on hay by making feeders where they have to actually work a little bit to get it out, that's okay. So like watch how this one's getting done. Right? See how it just reaches her lips in there, she grabs a little bit of hay, she's pulling out. She's going to drop some, that's fine. They're all going to drop some. We don't mind that they're dropping some, but when they're going in there and they're just making a big old mess of it, well, we care. We don't like it. It's wasteful. I'll show you that because hay feeders are the better way to feed them. If you put the hay on the ground like we used to do unrolling it, like we talked about, they're gonna unroll it. That's absolutely true. But they're gonna step on it, they're gonna poop on it, they're gonna pee on it. All the mud or anything else that's on the ground is gonna get absorbed into it. Others are gonna lay in it for bedding, which is fine, I get it, they wanna have a warm bed. It's not helpful, and it's going to cause problems for you health-wise, because when everybody's pooping, and peeing on what they're eating, they're going to get some sort of issue from it. They're gonna get parasites, if parasites are gonna spread more rampant, all kinds of problems are gonna come from it. So, mitigate it as best you can. Now, if you're unrolling it like we did for a while, we did it, and we'd do it again if we were out on pasture, but we really don't wanna to go to that route if we don't have to. Let mom do her job. The only reason she's pinned up is because she's a, she's a first time mom and there's other ewes, or other lambs that were trying to drink off of her and she was having a hard time keeping them pushed away and letting her drink. So we just decided to give them a little space so they can do that. Needless to say, you can see the baby is now full and milk drunk and about to take a nap. If you, the less you can interfere with these guys, the better off you're gonna be. Not saying don't intervene when something is going on, but do the best you can to only intervene if it's really necessary. So Chris is about to throw some grain in the creep feeder for these guys. We don't give them a bunch, and that is because when you do give them a bunch, what happens is they go in there and they gorge themselves. Now we have this creep feeder turned all the way down, and they have to work a little bit to get it out, which makes it to where they can't just go in there and go to town. But you'll see all the lambs know that they can get in there, and they're actually pushing their way in because they can fit. This is why it's set up as a creep feeder. Like I said, it only allows lambs in here to eat. Now, a little, 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 little out the bottom, but for the most part, they actually have to work at it to get some. This is by design because if you don't grain them, not saying they won't grow, they will grow, and a good mom is gonna grow them well. But they grow much easier, and it's easier on mom as far as they're, getting, they're starting to get a head start in life. They're gonna get going and growing. That's what we want. Again, if you're... If you're doing it as a hobby and you're not selling them for meat like our farm does, then I can understand you're not really caring how big they get or how small they are. If they're pets, they're pets. I, I understand that. But that's not what we want. The problem is when you let them have grain, if they get too much of it, they start getting a poopy butt. And you can see some of them still have a residue from a poopy butt. Like this guy right here. They've already... We've already taken care of it and addressed the issue. We, like I said, we've turned the grain feeders all the way down. They can, they have to actually stomp at it and beat it to get grain out. And that's why you'll hear them, when we were outside earlier and you heard them kicking it, that's what they were doing because they thought there was more in there. 
we hope you guys found the video helpful. And if you like I said before in the beginning, if you have questions, put them in the comments below and we'll answer all of them. Thanks for watching. Have a blessed week and we'll see you next time.